Well, hello. I'm headed up north on Highway 63. I've left McLaughlin and I'm just going north. Uh, somewhere in the territory to the west, which unfortunately we will not be able to visit for reasons which I'll show you on Google Maps, uh, is the territory where Lois Lenski's children's book, Prairie School, took place. And I've mentioned that in a few videos, and I might actually do a book video about it. I've never done a video on a book before, but that might be one worth it, just because of... Well, I blame Lois Lenski for dragging me out to North Dakota. So, uh... I, uh... It, it turns out it was in a little town called... In real life, it was in a little town called Maple Leaf, South Dakota, which is a ghost town now and as far as I can tell it is entirely on private land uh, and the turn off to the private land I think that was it but it might have been the one next one back uh, it, it's so hard to tell with the dash cam but it's uh it's they're gated and then when you look at the road you're just like oh yeah and i'm in a toyota camry so i don't like to go through somebody else's gates for obvious reasons and i don't like taking my toyota camry on roads that are bad that was it okay we are right here going around the bend and as we go around the bend we are crossing into north dakota and if you remember when i started us all off i said we're going into a third world country because the roads got a lot worse, well, here, as you cross the border into North Dakota on Highway 63, the roads get a lot worse, so, yeah, I guess what's sauce for the goose is good for the gander, or something like that, I don't remember how that expression goes, but, uh, anyway, we'll give you a quick whip round to Maple Leaf via the magic of Google Maps, and then I'll jump into my topic. Alright, so I'm in Google right now, so let's Google a town called Maple Leaf. You can tell I've Googled this before, South Dakota. We'll go to Maps. And we'll wait on my slowish internet. And looks like a lot of nothing, doesn't it? So let me click to the Oh, here it's doing. All right. So click to the satellite version. Suddenly it looks like something. So let me zoom in. And then I'll zoom out and show you where the hell this is. <laughs> Maple Leaf is in Corson County, South Dakota. And what you can see here... Oh, they're going to get rain there tonight, too. Uh, this, to me, looks like a grain elevator. This looks like a shadow. Uh, I can't make this bigger. I have it magnified as much as possible. These look like, you know, office buildings, maybe? Let me just see what 3D does. Nothing. Okay. Uh, so we'll go back to 2D. So that's Maple Leaf, South Dakota. This was a town in this area. Uh, a very small town, but in the book it is described as having, a, I guess, an out-of-business out-of-business hardware store and a couple other small patheticnesses. And you can see that there's just nothing left here. Uh, the, oh, there's a foundation. I'm the, Actually, this right here, right where I'm running my mouse down. Let's see if I can make it big. Nope. This right here where I'm running my mouse up and down looks like a series of foundations. Maple Leaf, South Dakota, um, Lois Lenski visited in the spring. Uh, she actually got caught in McLaughlin, South Dakota for a few days by a blizzard, and finally a local rancher took her out to Maple Leaf where she got caught again by another blizzard. Uh, lucky her, uh, but she was sorry she ever tried that. But my hope, I knew that I wouldn't find the school, but my hope was I'd find at least the town. But let me scroll down a little bit. As it turned out, there is a sort of a road, but look at that. I mean, seriously, right here where I'm running the mouse and then north, this hasn't been graded in years. Uh, the, the part I saw from the highway 
looked impassable. So I'll zoom out here. I do see this looks like a something. Like it must have been like an old highway. I don't know. But uh, we'll zoom over. We'll not zoom. Scroll over here. Old bridge here over Oak Creek. The road actually turned south here. I guess I could have looked for <laughs> whatever this is. Hey. Uh, so I guess I was heading up Highway 63. But anyway, right here is where I would have had to turn. Where you saw me on the highway turning. Let's go up here. A ways. <laughs> yeah. The road turns right as you cross the state line. So it was a little before that. But, uh, yeah, I looked at that road and I just thought, oh, no way. No way in hell. Not in a Toyota Camry. So I didn't. Uh, let's go back here to where it was. And I'll just see how much I can zoom in. Let's see. It is four-wheel drive territory. This is not, let's take the Camry for a trip. So let's turn here, let's see, and I wouldn't go through that. Because you know what this means? It means private land. And uh, I know enough ranchers and so on in this area to know to know better. So Google Maps is really cool and it's a great way to evaluate a trip before you actually take it. And by the way, you might hear a little bit of thunder. I don't record these in a studio. Uh, if you hear thunder, it's because there is a thunderstorm moving in. I don't know if we'll get any rain from it, but if we do, I will probably pause my recording and go close windows. Oh, one room schoolhouse right there to your right. I should, I, I, I'm thinking now I should have pulled over and taken a picture of it, and, but I didn't. Because it's a little piece of history. They are falling down and disappearing. Like a lot of things. But uh, anyway, so Google Maps is pretty cool. I uh, have toured a lot of interesting places that way. You're just getting an idea what you're getting into before you get there. I was looking at Cartwright, North Dakota. Because I'm thinking about a road trip here before school starts. So yeah, plug for Google Maps and I'm not even going to get paid for it. All right, let's jump into a topic of the video, which uh, I entitled it Pro Brainwashing and Indoctrination. And actually this video comes off, and another, the one I'm doing next week, which will be more about skepticism and cynicism, come off of some of the comments that were made in my video I did a few weeks ago now on propaganda. Um, I would say, in answer to some of those questions, I view propaganda as a must be raining a little as a tool that can be used for indoctrination um, and that means I need to clarify a few uh, two definitions you will hear the word brainwashing used a lot in propaganda you know they're brainwashing kids to believe in global warming they're brainwashing kids to believe in gay marriage or you know whatever um, they're brainwashing kids not to believe in God. They're brainwashing kids to believe in God. So let's put a stop to that before we get into the video, because I think it's important to know that we're talking about the same thing. Brainwashing involves a certain element of force. Uh, the definition I wrote down here, and I didn't write down my source, unfortunately, but I bet I rephrased it. It's pressuring somebody to adopt really different beliefs. And what you're doing is you're doing it with uh, really systematic, you know, organized methods and force. And as some examples, I would point out, uh, well, Winston Smith from the book, 1984, George Orwell's book. Uh, what happened to him in Room 101 and leading up to it was brainwashing. He learned to love Big Brother and the party through brainwashing. Uh, what happened in Anthony Burgess's, and I can't remember if the book had the same title as the movie, um, A Clockwork Orange. 
uh, what's the guy's name? Was it Alex? I don't remember the the character's name. Anyway, he's he's an awful kid, a uh, violent criminal, and so on, and he gets sent to a re-education so that he's not violent and a criminal anymore. And yeah, he does choose to go through it because he thinks it's a way to get out of jail, but it's brainwashing. Uh, or a classic 1950s movie, and I'm not sure if it was based on a book or not. I was going to look it up, but I didn't. But obviously, if it's based on a book, I've never read it. Manchurian Candidate. Uh, let's see. Frank Sinatra was the star. Angela Lansbury was in it as uh, quite an interesting and creepy villain. Um, but that was also all about brainwashing. By the way, if I would have kept going straight there, I would have gone through the town of Selfridge, which is uh, actually an attractive drive, and uh, I recorded it, or thought I recorded it, but this dash cam, sometimes it fails, and uh, it failed, so I didn't get that footage. Which I'm really sorry about, because I went through some interesting weather, and it would have been fun to have on video, but whatever. Um indoctrination is a bit different indoctrination is where you're teaching a person or group but here's the thing teaching them to accept a set of beliefs uncritically that would be things like your church will do a ccd or your confirmation uh, those are all indoctrination i'll probably pursue this a little bit more at the end of the video but it's worth pointing out just because somebody is indoctrinated into a belief doesn't necessarily make that belief false or wrong. So, uh, yeah, we'll just keep that in mind as I go through here. So I'm going to use a religious example, just, just because. <coughs> um, so I'm going to invent two people named Wilbur and Wilma. Make them start with the same letter just to make it confusing. So let's start with Wilbur. No, when Wilbur was born, he was baptized in front of the congregation and his family. Um, part of the baptism, of course, is that they all promise that they're going to help him lead a godly life, keep him in church, um, mentor him in the faith, and so on. Uh, of course, Wilbur doesn't remember any of this. This is his family saying, hey, we're going to make this decision for him before he's old enough to make any decisions for himself which he honestly won't be for many, many years yet. Uh, as Wilbur grows up, he discovers that all the, most of the adults he's exposed to believe in this. Um, he, he probably, especially when he's younger, doesn't know people who doubt. Uh, and he is rewarded all the time for thanking God, for praying, for going through the motions of, of uh, observing this God, even though he's too young to understand it. And you've seen this, you know, they'll reward, kids get all kinds of praise and they say, thank God, or they do a little prayer or something, or they say Jesus is their friend, and oh, that's so cute, and yeah, you've seen it. So he grows up, he, he might be going to youth group, he's surrounded, again, by other people who believe. Uh, as he gets older, he's going to learn the deeper mysteries. Uh, he'll be confirmed in front of the church. Uh, they'll make a big deal out of it. He'll swear to believe. Again, he's rewarded for accepting all this, even though he may have doubts. He may not even be old enough to really question it yet. Now, there is going to come a time, because Wilbur's going to turn into a teenager at some point, where he does start to question. Uh, some people like Wilbur are very good at shutting down their own internal questions before they get very far and before they're verbalized. But they question. And they may or may not like... He may or may not like the answers that he gets from the adults in his life. Uh, he won't be punished or harmed for these questions, but he, uh... But he does question. As he gets even older, especially when he has kids of his own, Thunder is still going on. In fact, I had to get up and close the kitchen window because rain was coming in. But with the drought we have, I guess that even a little bit will be good. But anyway, he may, as an adult, when he has kids, decide overall it's a good thing. So he's going to take his own kids despite his questions and he'll play the game. Uh, he may fall away. He may say he believes. 
uh, but only goes to church on special occasions, you know, Christmas and Easter, baptisms. Um, he may just pay lip service and not go at all. Well, he may be extreme and go atheist, but the thing is, he's not going to be punished for any of that. Some of the family will be ex upset. He may have grandma or aunt and uncle or mom and dad occasionally post something on Facebook or... Or, you know, what if we just take your kids to church? You know, that kind of thing. But it, it's all pretty loosey-goosey. And what you have there is indoctrination. Um, and uh, I got a lot of this actually from a video by Theremin Trees, which I will put down below. Uh, he does it much better than I do because he's a lot more articulate than I am. And he has better animations, not just a highway in North Dakota. Now I'm going to give you an alternate. This is a much more extreme example. This is uh, the life of Wilma. Wilma started out a lot like Wilbur. She wasn't going to the same church. Uh, everything basically works the same until she gets that age where she asks questions. Now, Wilbur was humored. The parents said, you know, the, the adults tried to answer him, but he would have gotten a lot of, well, someday when you're older it'll make sense. And Well, you're just going to have to work that out for yourself when they couldn't convince him. Oh no, not Wilma. What Wilma gets is anger. She gets told questions are not allowed. She may get guilt trips. How dare you question the Lord Jesus Christ who died on the cross for your sins in the most horrible agony imaginable. You're going to hell. Is that what you want? Do you want your mother never to see you again and to know that you're suffering in hell as she's in heaven? How selfish, Wilma. Those kind of things. Um, psychological torture. She may even be isolated growing up from those who who are not like her parents and her church. Maybe she's homeschooled. Maybe she goes to a private religious school. Um, I knew these people. I went to a Christian college. I knew them. Uh, I, I will say my own upbringing is more Wilbur, not Wilma, thank goodness. Um, if she really goes too far with her questioning, she might actually be isolated from her church or her family. Some churches and religions call it shunning. Her doubts will be attacked through manipulation, extreme interrogation. There may even be some mild physical torture. Uh, basically, her personality will not be allowed to form in this environment. And depending on how extreme it is, it may actually cross the border into brainwashing. So brainwashing would be more in the land of cults. Uh, I'm just not interested in talking about that today. I hope the thunder has been picked up. <laughs> uh, I'm not interested in talking about cults today, but uh, I think what I have given you are two examples of indoctrination, one fairly mild one more extreme. Uh, before I delve into that a little more deeply, and you might have also noticed I was wary of mentioning specific denominations, and I had my reasons. Um, I would like to talk a little bit about a gentleman named Robert J. Lifton. He's a psychiatrist, and he studied mind control. In fact, he wrote an article, and I'm going, or I'm sorry, a book, and I'm going to link to the article, which I'm going to discuss after this. Uh, what we're coming up on here is Sitting Bull College. Do I have that right? I'm, that might be the one in Newtown. Now I'm, now I'm questioning myself. Well, if I'm wrong, I'll put a correction in the video. But anyway, college there, it's a tribal college. And then to the right here, I'm going to jump into some older footage from a trip through uh, Fort Yates, South Dakota. North Dakota, North Dakota, sorry, North Dakota. Uh, this is on the Standing Rock Indian Reservation, uh, which is 
large part of Sioux County, North Dakota, which is on the state line, and a huge swath of South Dakota. In fact, a lot of the drive, see now we're headed east into Fort Yates. Uh, a lot of the drive through South Dakota, no, we weren't headed east, that was my headed south part. Here we're headed east. Wow, get it right, squirrel. By the way, a lot of my drive in South Dakota was actually through tribal land. So, uh, Fort Yates, if you ever look on a map, is on an island. Uh, it's connected. At times when I've been over, it seems more like an isthmus, you know, a narrow, connected by a narrow strip of land. Other times it does seem legitimately like an island. The way they built the bridge out to it is very makes it seem very like a penin like an isthmus a peninsula but uh you know it is river around it uh, not very deep river but river you know, the missouri river and actually you'll see uh this is kind of on lake oahe which is created by a dam down in pierce south dakota uh, fort yates is actually the county seat of sioux county north dakota i did not see a courthouse but when i was confused about the courthouse in mclaughlin down in corson county south dakota i was actually thinking of sioux county north dakota there's kind of a county office but i didn't find it um <clears throat> so county seat it's also the, the where the tribal headquarters are we'll actually drive past the tribal headquarters uh, this town uh, Fort Yates has only 184 people, which really, really surprised me. It's small, but it didn't seem that small. But then I wonder if the housing on the other side of the river is counted in that. See, we're crossing the river now. I honestly don't know, and that's something something I need to investigate better. But uh, they actually had a lot more people if you look back in the census like around 1970 let me just double check my number before i blurt it out 1970 1153 people living that was kind of the peak 1980 771 1990 183 oh my god what a drop that was uh, 1990 i th just said that one 2228 2010 184 Oh, estimated 2016, 210 people. So yeah, it has shrunk a lot. The, the explanation I read was uh, people moving out for the sake of employment. I don't... I don't know. Honestly, don't know. Uh, what we... Okay, I think we just passed it. Doggone it. I was going to point it out. There used to be a either like a Taco Bell or Taco John on the right, but we'll pass it again on the way out. So I'll point it out there. It looks like it's become a local restaurant in the same building. Not that Taco John or Taco Bell is good food. I'm just saying it was there. And then up here on your right, you can see a church. That's actually an old Baptist mission, which I found interesting. I, uh, I worked for a while on a reservation where the Catholic Church had a much stronger influence. I don't know what the predominant influence is down here. It could be that, you know, it just happens to be a Baptist mission there and it's not the main influence. I, I don't know. Um, I do know churches were heavily involved in a lot of the reservations for various reasons. Um, beyond those trees is the Missouri River. Uh, like I said, o Lake Oahe, because this is much wider than it would have been naturally. But because of the dam, the water is higher. Uh, I actually find Fort Yates, this, this location, is very attractive. Um, if there was really a main street to Fort Yates, I can just picture it here where it looks over the river. There's a park along the riverbank. Um... Maybe a couple restaurants overlooking the river or on the riverbank with outdoor seating. Although mosquitoes might be a problem. Um, that's what I see. Of course, with 100, what did I say, 184 people, that's not going to happen. But it makes a nice vision. Right here is a little place you can pull off and admire the view. I didn't this time. 
By the way, I did learn that Sitting Bull was actually buried in Fort Yates, and I just double-checked, I took a pause because uh, the fan was getting going and you can hear it in these videos. I did learn that it really was Sitting Bull College, so I won't have to go back and correct the video. Date. Uh, it turns out Sitting Bull is now buried down by Mobridge in the 1950s. His family asked uh, permission to move his remains, so he's now overlooking the Missouri River down by Mobridge, South Dakota. Uh, and there is, however, a monument, which I didn't see because I didn't go looking for it because I didn't know about it till today, um, but a monument here in Fort Yates where he was buried. And let's see. This is the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe here. And, uh, yeah, I don't really know what else to say. Um, you, you can Google more information if you want. I mean, this is just a quick drive-through. This isn't a tourist video or anything. Um, I will say... You won't make it out real well in this video, but I am impressed by their schools. They uh, they had some aging school buildings in town here. Uh, they've about now built some very beautiful school buildings out of town. Beautiful high school, beautiful elementary, and a beautiful junior high. Uh, they're all kind of on the same campus, which is good, but they're separate buildings, which I suppose developmentally makes sense if you have enough kids to do it. All right, I actually couldn't find enrollment figures for Fort Yates, which was kind of interesting. I could find it for the other school in the county, Selfridge, uh, for Fort Yates. All I actually found was grades, what was it? Grades 6, 7, and 8, which is 205 kids. But that gives you an idea how big they are. Uh, so I don't know why that is. I'm... You know, it could have to do with being a tribal high school. The reason it's not on the Department of Public Instruction website, I don't know. Uh, but that means they are pulling in a large number of kids from all around, and not just the town of Fort Yates, because that would be more kids than there are people in the town of Fort Yates, and that's just not physically possible. So uh, I'm headed out of Fort Yates here. You, uh, I don't know if I'd done a better job, but. I'd tell you what you were passing, but I know on the right here we're going to see that old, what, Taco Bell, Taco John, whatever it is. I don't really know. Uh, something. <laughs> yeah, right there on the right. See it? So whatever it's become. Also here across the river, I have seen, I've noticed some buildings since the last time I was through Fort Yates, which has, in fairness, been a few years. Uh, you'll you'll see what looks to be a museum. Uh, you'll see a, a string of small shops. They're all on the other side of the river. So it's like that's where the development is moving. Uh, I know that's from what I see with my eyes. That's where the newer buildings are. I don't know if flooding is a problem in Fort Yates, but look how close the river is. And this is, you know, it's April. The drought really hadn't gotten going yet, but... This is a dry year, so uh, take that for what it's worth. So I've run out of things to say about Fort Yates. Well, if we ever go through the town where I worked on reservation, I'd have a lot more intelligent things to say. I guess one other thing worth pointing out is that the Dapple protests actually occurred north of Fort Yates, along the river. So when we get to where I believe it happened, and I'll talk about why I said believe, we'll discuss them a little bit more, but this is not a pipeline protest video, and I'm not going to get too deep into the protests, honestly. All right, so uh, I, before we took our detour into Fort, Fort Yates here, I was talking about Robert J. Lifton, a psychiatrist who studied mind control, and he wrote a book called Thought Control and the Psychology of Totalitarianism. Now one of my links below, I talk a little bit about this thought control. And this would be what I suppose you could call hardcore indoctrination. Um, 
One of them is isolationism. Or, I'm sorry, isolation. Uh, wow. Isolation. Um, and that is where you cut out competing viewpoints, so they only hear the one viewpoint. Uh, mystical manipulation. That's where you're led to believe that things are happening because of some higher power. Uh, demand for purity. In other words, you don't question your orthodoxy. You take it all. You accept it all. Or none. Because you're not a real American if you don't believe in all of it. Uh, confession. Point behind confession is to monitor internal thoughts. And if you look a lot, a lot of what was done like at the communist re-education camps and such, confession was a big part of it. Whether you were confessing to real things or not. Um, but that enabled them to get inside of you. Uh, you cannot question the ideology at all. Often there will be jargon, which means their own, kind of like their own language. They, uh, I'm going to move the computer because it's making fan noises. I want to see if I can get it away from the microphone. Um, <clears throat> so when you have your own language, it's kind of like you're, you're in a club. And outsiders are excluded. You know, if a Catholic, for example, talks about trans... And I'm not saying Catholics are a cult because they're not. Uh, but if the Catholics talk about transubstantiation, a lot of people don't know what that is. Uh, and of course, any experience you have has to be submitted to group doctrine. Um, you, you didn't accomplish that yourself. That was Jesus. And a last one here is dispensing existence. In order to be saved or enlightened, you must submit. You want to go to heaven, you better accept Jesus into your soul. Now, I will just point out that religious indoctrination is only some of them. If you have all of them, you probably have a cult. Now, yeah, I, I would say that there is a gray line between cult and uh, religious indoctrination. And I'm not intelligent enough to tell you where that is. But I will just say that it is there. Now, so let's get back to the topic of, topic of indoctrination. By the way, we are headed back north now. Um, hard to see because the computer is now several feet away from me. <laughs> We always like to think that any of our views are ones that we arrived at rationally. We thought them through. But is that necessarily the case? I always liked to think that. I'm sure you've always liked to think that too. Well, the reality is you look at maps. Like take the famous red and blue county map in the United States. What is the difference between a red county and a blue county? Are the people in one type of county smarter than the people in the other type of county? No. What it has to do with is who you grow up around and who you're exposed to. Indoctrination. Uh, look at a world map of religions. Did, I, did people growing up in Saudi Arabia really just choose because of the preponderance of evidence that, yeah, Muslim is best? Did the people growing up in the United States decide, oh, preponderance of evidence, Christianity is best. People in, I don't know, Denmark, atheism is best. Or were they immersed in a culture that made them more likely to be somewhat? in a certain way. You know, I grew up in one of the blue counties, or sorry, red counties. I still live in a red county. Can't seem to escape them. And, uh, you know, you're actually attacked for being a Democrat or for holding certain liberal views. Um, you know, kids don't even understand a lot of the arguments. They just know what the right wing is best. And you look at somebody like Rush Limbaugh, his whole thing isn't about reasoning out argument. His whole thing is shouting out the opposition and being so confident and bombastic that people just accept it and don't think too, too uh, deeply about it. 
so I would just say that geography is destiny. So don't go thinking, well, it's okay. I grew up in San Francisco. So I'm not ignorant like those rubes from Mississippi. You were indoctrinated just as much as those, air quotes, rubes from Mississippi. Because you grew up in your own culture. And there are a lot of your fundamental beliefs, whether you realize it or not, that you just accept as true without reasoning them through. We all like to think we're different, but we're not. Uh, it's easier to realize it if you're somebody who has gone through a big transformation in beliefs. Um, so that's why I say always look for the evidence and always be open to the idea that maybe new evidence will show that you're wrong. That your belief needs to change. So that brings me to something that I do as a profession. I'm a teacher. And uh, I'm not a parent, happily. I don't want to be a parent. But uh, th a lot of this is going to go for parents, too. Maybe even more for parents. Because honestly, <coughs> excuse me, people like to blame teachers and schools for society's ills. But a lot of it actually comes from homes. Parents and family have a bigger influence on kids than the school does. You know, I wish I had the amount of influence that people around here seem to think I do. You're trying to brainwash my boy into believing that Noah's Ark's a fable? Um, just giving him the evidence, man. So... One thing with children, you don't even have to be a parent or teacher to know this, they need boundaries. They are children. They don't have the experience of an adult. They don't always make rational choices because they don't have that um, archive of experience to call on when making choices. They see a liquid in a bottle and it looks pretty and they may want to chug it because by golly, it looks like the Kool-Aid Ma gave me yesterday. They, uh, so sometimes you just have to say, no child, you're not going to drink that chemical you found underneath the kitchen sink. But I want to. Too bad, kid. Now, here's where good parenting comes in and bad parenting can come in. Hey, look, I got past. <laughs> you may notice a common theme there with my driving. Um... The authoritarian, I'm the parent, that's why, might work in the short term to stop an argument or a scene. But as much as possible, you need to give a reason. But again, at the right moment. Uh, if, if, you, if a kid is really angry, they're not open to reason right then that look at psychological studies, when you're angry, when your emotions are up, the logical processing part of your brain shuts down. So, you know, as the rational adult, you need to know at the right moment, but you should always give a reason. Your kid wants to drink the pretty liquid under the sink, and you're like, um, no, sweetie, that's drain cleaner, and she throws a little fit. Well, sit her in a corner, give her time to calm down, and then you can rationally explain, sweetie, drain cleaner has hydrochloric acid in it. It'll burn your teeth, your stomach, your mouth, and your esophagus, and you'll die. Uh, that's what you have to... So give them a reason. So they know that it's not just happening because you're an authority. Because if you teach them, I'm the parent, that's why. Or I'm the teacher, that's why. I'm the authority. That doesn't teach them reasons, that teaches them obedience to authority. And that we don't want to teach unquestioning obedience to authority. Yes, it might be easier to raise or teach a child who is immediately obedient to authority. Uh, but that short circuits a lot of their development of their own brain and their own independent thoughts. Um, tell me, if, and, and kids are smart, even little kids. No, in their own way. 
Tell me if you haven't seen this. You're at the grocery store. Some child wants something and the parent says no. So the child throws a temper tantrum. They're on the floor, they're screaming, they're yelling, they're hitting the floor. And the parent walks away. Walks over the next aisle. Kid looks up like, wait a second, that didn't work. They go over to the next aisle where the parent is and they try it again. Now tell me that kid isn't doing some reasoning. They think that little temper tantrum will work. Of course, the parent better not ever give in to that. Because once the parent gives into it, the kid's going to be, yeah, that did work. Um, I used to work in a fast food restaurant and I... I saw, I, I, well, yeah, I saw it all <laughs> with kids. Uh, but I always respected parents who, when the kid would be a little runt, or, well, they're all little runts because they're kids. When the parent, when the kid would, I'm going to have to close some windows. It's raining and now it's coming in the windows that are open. Someday I'm going to have to figure out how the rain can simultaneously come in the east and west windows of the house. But not the north or south windows, which is exactly what's happening right now. All right. So anyway, worked in the fast food restaurant. I saw it all. I saw parents that uh, the kid would misbehave and they'd be annoying, and the parent would say, "If you don't behave, we're going home." And the kid keeps acting up. Maybe it worked for thirty seconds. Now, sweetie, I'm serious now. If you don't behave, we're going home. Keeps acting up, honey. This time I mean it. If you don't behave, we're going home. And you're just sitting there saying, so go home! But of course you can't say it because you work in the restaurant. Well, I always figure, don't make threats if you're not going to carry them out. But I will also say, yeah, that kid will ruin your evening because you have to take them home because they're a little ass that doesn't know how to behave in a restaurant. Part of your job as a parent is to teach them not to be a little ass that doesn't know how to behave in a restaurant. And that means give up that fun night you had planned at the restaurant. You do that, the kid knows you're serious. Lesson learned. That's how you teach them self-control. Now, is that indoctrination? Probably. Uh, I would follow it up with, Kid, this is why you need to be quiet in a restaurant. You're not the only person in here. There's other people around, and you're frankly annoying. So shut up and let them enjoy their dinner, and we can enjoy ours. Everybody's happy. <laughs> um, maybe that's why I don't teach elementary school. <laughs> But uh, that authoritarian thing, boy, you obey or I'll whoop you, doesn't actually teach them why. It just teaches them to behave. They can reason. Maybe you need to put the reasoning on their level, but they can reason. And like I said, if the emotions are high, there's no reasoning going on. Save that when, for when they've calmed down. Um, now as a teacher, you can go another step. Well, as a parent too, you should go that step. And actually maybe go this step for your own life. Sorry, I'm kind of looking for the, uh, the casino. We may have actually passed it. I'm not sure. It's the Four Bears Casino. I was just going to point it out. I've never actually been to the casino because I don't gamble because that's a tax on people that can't do math and I can do math. But anyway, one of the things that's appearing more and more in science education because we're discovering that we have a country of people that really don't understand science or scientific reasoning is some some literature will call it clever statements other literature will call it CER but what it they both stand for the same thing uh, clever just adds some letters that don't stand for anything uh, claim evidence reasoning and here's what you've got. Okay, here's the claim. Specify the claim. Now, what's your evidence for that claim? And then what reasoning 
makes you believe that that evidence supports that claim. Now you teach people to do that, science or otherwise. Wow, the rain's really coming down now. Uh, science or otherwise is it teaches them to evaluate propaganda. It's actually an inoculation against propaganda. Because you hear that claim, you say, wait, well, wait a second. Why did Sean Hannity say that? What's his evidence? Uh, why did I just say that? What's my evidence? Whoops. <laughs> um, so it, it, it's powerful. And that's part of uh, recovering from indoctrination. Is the ability to question all that. Now, I have linked to this story before, and I'll put the link down there again because I've been saving a big long... Okay, sorry, I had to get close to the computer, which I moved. Uh, that is the casino up there on your right. Like I said, I'm not a gambler. It's a pretty big casino. I going to assume it's nice probably all right so uh but i've linked to this before but i'm going to link to it again uh people on the left made great hay over this the texas republicans opposing the teaching of higher order thinking skills and then you had your uh, Republican apologist saying, no, it's not what you think, it's just that the schools are trying to get kids to question their religion and turn them into Democrats and whatever. Higher order thinking skills, or HOTS, what that is is the ability to ask questions. And what the reason Texas Republicans opposed it is kids would say things like, well, what evidence do you have that there's a God? Oops. <laughs> uh, what evidence do you have that the Earth isn't warming up? Because I see a whole lot of evidence that says that the Earth is warming up. Um, what evidence do you have that fossil fuels cause no harm? Uh, I read a dumbass editorial, I don't even know if I want to post a link to it, about how we don't need to worry about global climate change because God created the earth and God is sovereign over the earth. Um, hello? <laughs> that's not evidence and that's not reasoning. That's just silliness. Um, one of the things that's been in the news a lot this summer, and people have their reasons. It's, it's not as black and white as it sounds, but Republicans saying on surveys that higher education is harmful to the United States. To which I say, what? Well, there, there is a reason, and I'll tell you what it is. Part of it is a lot of people on the right, and those of you on the left, don't start getting on your high horse and thinking you're so much better because you've got your own areas. But there's a lot of people on the right who think that when a college teaches things like evolution that's brainwashing I got into an argument on a well the discussion part the comment part of one of Aaron Ra's articles on Patheos about uh, the Texas uh, evolution thingy this year and the guy was just telling me I'm closed-minded because I don't want every Tom Dick and Harry to raise alternate theories in the classroom well, my reason is these aren't scientifically evidence-based alternative theories, and they're not theories because they're not scientifically evidence-based. Well, see, they don't want their orthodoxy questioned. Now, free-thinking people, notice I didn't give a political side there, free-thinking people don't mind their orthodoxy being questioned with evidence, because that may mean that their thinking is wrong. But that's why... Um, now, I know part of the Republican thing is there are some extremists. Remember I said that on the left, don't get to pat yourself on the back too much? The left has things like... Well, they just go too far. You know, The protests against Miley Yiannopoulos or Ann Coulter, which are both horrible people... But the protests against them speaking, the 
and I don't care about protesting them because that that's one of our freedoms, but the actual physically blocking them from speaking, uh, shouting them down so they can't even be heard, I get nervous over that. Um, now, there we're getting into kind of a tricky area because then I also, just this morning I saw a video it was about a one of those hate pastors on a college campus and he's out there with his megaphone and it's a public college so they can't just kick him off but with his megaphone preaching his hate and a lady came up and play, started playing the bagpipe and I will admit I thought it was funny uh, personally what I would want to see there is well you're in a public area let's get rid of the microphone use your own voice um, I don't know, uh, but then she pretty much drowned him out, but at the same time, it's kind of good to make him ridiculous. I, I'm always amused by, like, the, well, the, some colleges, they'll hand out bingo cards, and every time they say hell, you get a mark. Every time they say gays or sodomy or something, you get a mark on it, and then you can give away Richard Dawkins books or something. I read that one on Friendly Atheist. But, uh, so I guess I need to work that one out a little bit more clearly. But my, my bigger point is, the, the reasons Republicans don't like it is they see their own viewpoints are threatened. Uh, they see left-wing politics sometimes often taken to a excessive degree by young idealists who haven't yet lived outside the college. Um, and then... These happen in these really extreme cases, and then Republicans extrapolate it to it's happening all over. When I hear people tell me what goes on in my own classroom, like, really? Have you ever been in a public school classroom? Because it's nothing like that. Now what they're spouting off is what they've heard on Rush Limbaugh which some school somewhere did something crazy and they think all schools are doing that. So what I would say is just be willing to question any belief. That'll help you with the propaganda. On the basis of evidence. Some people just love conspiracy theories and I have no patience for those. Uh, and those I think belong in a different video. Uh, and I will also say that there is such a thing as skepticism, and then there's such a thing as cynicism. And I think all those would be good and good, good and better topics. Sorry, I thought we were somewhere else in the road. Uh, those would be good and better topics for another video. Uh, now, in the next video, it, we didn't get to it in this video. I thought we would, but thank God I don't talk that much. Uh, Thank Vishnu, I don't talk that much too. What the heck, let's get them all. Thank Zeus. But anyway, in the next video, we're going to pass where the DAPL protests took place. We'll also pass where there is a small uh, protester camp still around, or at least there was a, on May 5th of 2017. So until then, I hope that was interesting. Hope was useful. Um, and I, if you walk away from this with any message, it is... Be open to questioning any ev any belief you hold with evidence. So thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.